I'm Vinny Politan. Thanks so much for joining us here on Closing Arguments. And it's an unusual verdict Monday. A big verdict today in Brooklyn, New York. R&B superstar R. Kelly on trial facing federal racketeering charges. This is the moment where the jury spoke and they spoke loudly, ladies and gentlemen. Guilty on all counts for R&B superstar R. Kelly. Uh, these are the only images we're going to get because it's federal court. No cameras or microphones permitted inside there. But Court TV legal correspondent Julie Janae is in Brooklyn, New York tonight and has the latest for us and the reaction to a, really a dramatic day and a big conclusion for uh, something that has been years in the making, Julia. Vinny, really a dramatic day, one that was unexpected to most of us when it comes to how quickly this jury came back. They were five hours into their deliberations today. Add that to the four hours that they spent on Friday, so only around nine hours. Most were not expecting them to come back with a verdict today, but the news of that decision coming in just reverberated through the courthouse, people running to make sure that they were inside these overflow rooms and even inside the courthouse to make sure they witnessed what would happen. I watched this jury walk in in one by one, not making eye contact with the defendant. One woman did glance over at him, and I noticed Robert Kelly being very still, almost frozen, just completely stoic throughout the time of the reading. He tensed just a little bit, it seemed, when the jury foreman rose. And the way this foreman uh, replied, first of all, I'll talk about his note uh, to the judge to say that they had a verdict. He said, regarding the verdict, we have finally reached a verdict. So it gives us a sense that inside that jury room, it was not as unexpected. They felt like they had been laboring over this for a very long amount of time. Uh, he read off guilty, your honor, over and over again. No reaction visibly from Robert Kelly, other than the fact that his frozen state just was so uh, recognizable because his attorneys continued to move. He did not write anything. He did not look anywhere, just staring almost into space as he learned his fate. Uh, Julia, this was a, a federal indictment, and the charges were a little different than we normally see in, in the state cases that we cover day in and day out here on Court TV. I, explain to us uh, what exactly he was found guilty of um, and how that breaks down uh, for R. Kelly's future. Absolutely. This was a complicated case for these jurors. This spans three decades. There are six Jane Doe's in the indictment and there are nine counts. But under that first count of racketeering, there were 14 underlying offenses where the prosecution had to prove at least two of them in order for this jury to find him guilty of racketeering. So here's a breakdown of it by the Jane Doe's and the allegations So Jane Doe number one that we know is the late R&B star and actress Aaliyah. The only charge related to her was bribery, and it was one of those predicate underlying offenses for racketeering. This jury found that that was proven by the prosecution. Jane Doe number two testified on the stand as Stephanie. She was 17 when she met the defendant, and the charge related to her was sexual exploitation of a child due to the visual recording because the age of consent in Illinois where this happened was 17. So the sex was not illegal at the time, but the recording was, the jury found that was proven. For Jane Doe number three, Sonia, who testified that she was 21 in 2003 when she said that the defendant locked her in a room. One of the members of his team kept her in a room in his studio and that she was drugged and assaulted while she was unconscious. Kidnapping, transportation, coercion, and enticement were related to her allegations. This jury struggled with that through the notes that they sent us, wanting more information, and ultimately they found that her allegations were not proven by the prosecution, but that did not affect the guilty of racketeering for the underlying offenses. Moving to Jane Doe number four, Geronda Pace, uh, someone who was 16 when she met the defendant. Forced labor, video recording, coercion of a minor to engage in sexual activity using interstate commerce. The jury found all of those were proven in this case. And Jane Doe number five related to the Man Act violations, the separate counts, counts uh, 
two through four of the indictment. Reckless exposure to herpes, sexual exploitation of a child, transportation, coercion, and enticement. She's someone who actually lived with the defendant when she was 17 and older. She testified under the name Jane. The jury found that the counts related to her were proven and that uh, Kelly was guilty of those charges. And finally, Jane Doe, number six, who testified as Faith. Forced labor, reckless exposure to herpes here in New York, and transportation, coercion, and enticement. This jury found that those were proven and that Kelly was guilty of those Man Act violations. Wow. Um, powerful. Power. I mean, the jury speaking very clearly uh, with this verdict about what they see and what they heard. I want to take a quick listen to Peter uh, Fitzhugh. He's the HSI special agent in charge who spoke afterwards, uh, kind of explaining uh, to to all of us what this meant uh, for, for prosecutors and, and, and why uh, R. Kelly was someone that they went after. Today's verdict brings an end to Robert Kelly's decade-long reign of terror over many vulnerable girls, boys, and young women. With this verdict, it is my sincere hope that it will also begin the healing process for these brave survivors. Today's decision demonstrates that our system of justice knows no boundaries and will hold criminals accountable, regardless of their fame or fortune. Mr. Kelly once said, I'm no angel, but I'm no monster either. I wholeheartedly disagree with that. The investigative and prosecution team spent months conducting hundreds of interviews, analyzing documentary and electronic evidence, all of which confirmed the true depravity of Mr. Kelly. For years, Mr. Kelly believed that his power and fame could defy the justice system and allow him to continue his abuse. Today, a jury of Mr. Kelly's peers confirmed what these courageous victims have known for far too long. Mr. Kelly is a prolific serial predator. Despite numerous reports of his destructive abuse over the years, Mr. Kelly's brazen acts of intimidation against his accusers kept him shielded from prosecution. Mr. Kelly had the audacity to engage with his associates to bribe and threaten victims, their families, and witnesses, all in an effort to prevent the truth from being told. Make no mistakes, these actions by Mr. Kelly and his associates were not only designed to hide the truth, but to also to keep and continue his destructive ways against the young and vulnerable. In their failed attempt to evade justice, Mr. Kelly and his associates made one critical error. They underestimated the resilience and courage of the victims who refused to be silenced. All right, let's bring in our think tank tonight, get more reaction. Uh, joining us in Fort Lauderdale, Florida tonight, criminal defense attorney, civil rights attorney, KC Early is with us. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, family law attorney Jennifer Brandt. And in Houston, Texas, criminal defense attorney Brian Weiss. Great to see everyone tonight. Um, KC, nine hours of deliberations. This was a six-week trial. That's a quick deliberation. Seems like... Uh, this jury found this evidence overwhelming. Indeed, absolutely. I said the same thing, that there was so much evidence that the prosecution was able to bring forth. And I'm glad that in this case, his celebrity status, as well as the money that he had, did not tip the scales of justice in his favor. Oftentimes, celebrities and, you know, actors typically get away with this type of behavior. But in the court of law, um, the jury spoke and rendered a just verdict. Speaking of the jury, here's Jacqueline uh, Kasoulis, who's the acting U.S. attorney, talking about that jury. I want to thank the men and women of the jury for their time and attention throughout the trial and for their careful assessment of the overwhelming evidence in this case. In rendering its verdict today, the jury delivered a powerful message to men like R. Kelly. No matter how long it takes, the long arm of the law will catch up with you. Jennifer Brandt, we're in a new era now. You're talking about Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, R. Kelly, all now getting convicted of these types of offenses. 
You're right, Vinny. And I think that the celebrity status doesn't help you anymore and in fact hurts you because people are taking a closer look at celebrities and their, you know, their power over people and how they treat people and are really starting to hold them accountable for their misdeeds. And we can see it with R. Kelly. Um, years ago, he wasn't convicted. Now he, he has been convicted and the jury spoke loudly um, with this quick conviction and on all counts. Um, so I think people are really starting to take victims seriously and victims are, are starting to come forward and they're not afraid anymore. And they don't feel that because someone's a celebrity that they will, will not be heard. So yeah, our world is changing, Vinny, that's for sure. All right, Brian Weiss, um, Steve Greenberg, who's on our show a lot, who uh, represented R. Kelly, uh, posted this tweet in, in reaction to the verdict today. Uh, he did not try this particular case, but he said, we are extraordinarily disappointed in the verdict that was returned by the New York jury today. Mike Leonard and myself believe that the verdict was not supported by the evidence and is instead is a reflection of the hysteria whipped up by a couple of TV shows. Now, he's not talking about this show, but he's talking about surviving R. Kelly and other shows. Um, Brian, let me ask you, why does it take a documentary to get prosecutors to do what prosecutors are supposed to do? You know, Vin, that's the $64,000 question, because if it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a well-oiled machine to create a predator. And that's exactly what happened. I can't understand for the life of me why it took as long as it did for people who sit in corner offices and state's attorney's offices and U.S. attorney's offices to recognize that this guy was a serial pedophile hiding in plain sight. And when all is said and done, you know, facts are stubborn things, guys. This was a six-week trial, liberation. I've had juries out longer in DWI cases. This, as they say in some parts of East Texas, was a slow plea of guilty, and it was incredibly fitting that the jury spoke as loudly and as clearly as they did today in the Eastern District of New York, guys. KC, the, the problem I really have, though, is with prosecutors, and not just in New York, but also the ones in Illinois. I mean, a lot of these allegations go back years and years, and, 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 it, and it took, it took a docu-series to wake everybody up. It shouldn't take a docu-series to wake up prosecutors. I agree. I mean, it's unfortunate that it took millions of viewers to watch several series of this uh, Surviving Art Kelly in order to get the wheels moving. I mean, it's unfortunate, but R. Kelly was allowed to continue his acts over years. Um, he got away with the first case uh, with his defense of it wasn't me when he was on camera. And he continued year after year. And it, was, it took the courage as well as the victims to come forward. Uh, you know, they had to relive their experiences and just go through that emotional trauma and testify to that in front of strangers. So not only did it take courage, but it, it allowed them to go down this healing process. So hopefully now they can turn the chapter and and continue to heal. All right. I want to uh, bring back in Court TV legal correspondent Julia Janae, who is in Brooklyn tonight. So um, we've been tracking R. Kelly's case or cases now, right, since we relaunched this network. They've been on the docket somewhere. Um, what does it look like right now for R. Kelly going forward in terms of of the sentencing here and the other charges that he is facing around the country and in state court and in federal court. Well, Vinny, Judge Ann Donnelly has pushed out the sentencing. It is not even going to be this year. May 4th of 2022 is when she has scheduled the sentencing for the uh, crimes that he's been convicted of here in New York. That range, as far as the sentencing, uh, from 10 years up to life in prison. He has those other cases that could have played into why she has pushed this out so far. The two in Illinois, one is a state case, one is a federal case, and then a case that's also pending in Minnesota. Minnesota. Many of those charges are similar to the ones here. So we'll be looking at those cases now. He is in the Metropolitan Brooklyn Center Detention Center here, but it'll likely be moved back to the Chicago area prison or jail, rather, where he has been housed up until this trial when he was brought here to New York. Julie Janae bringing in another verdict uh, today here on your front row seat to justice uh, live in Brooklyn tonight. Thank you so much, Julie.